Welcome. So glad you guys are here. Um, I'm, I'm especially glad you're here because I've never done this before. So uh, thank you. Uh, I appreciate your kindness in advance. I hope that I will have something to share that will help you. Um, my name is Amanda Stiles. I'm the Director of Information Systems at Literacy Action. We are a, oh, thanks to our sponsors. Uh, we are a adult education nonprofit here in Atlanta. We serve uh, adult learners who need to learn how to read, do basic math, speak English, and pass the citizenship exam. So we have kind of two branches of um, students. And we were founded back in 1968. We are the largest and oldest adult literacy nonprofit in the Southeast. And um, we were founded because of the civil rights movement. You know, there was, there was an empowerment piece that um, came out of that, that people really needed to be able to read in order to be able to empower themselves and advocate for themselves and change their lives. So that's what our work is about. And all of our classes are free, which is pretty awesome because our students really need that. Uh, who am I? So I majored in social work in college. Uh, I, I was not really expecting to end up in a technology kind of job. I was a fundraiser for 15 years for other nonprofits, and I, um, I noticed that I always really liked the database stuff. I really liked mail merges and reports, and everybody else hated that stuff. And I was like, this must be a thing. I should do that. If I like that and no one else does, I embrace that. So, um, so that's how I ended up uh, working with Salesforce because I, um, I implemented Salesforce at my last organization because I was managing six million dollars worth of grants and I needed something that could keep track of all the things I needed to do. And they liked it enough that they moved all the rest of the fundraising over. And then I finished the capital campaign I was working on and I was like, I want a job where I just do this. Uh, and luckily, Literacy Action was looking for somebody. Um, when I came on, we used Salesforce for volunteers um, a little bit, um, and we used it for donations. And that was kind of it, but they wanted to do more. They knew that they wanted to make a commitment to Salesforce. And we're really lucky. We have a board member who is like heading up the center of excellence at Cox Automotive, and so he, was, he is like the driving force on the board. Um, so it's awesome for me to have him around. Um, but yeah, so I'm a career changer. Um, but I think that that's worked out really well because I get what they need. So this first step um, when I started was to figure out what on earth was going on in our organization. Um, what version of the nonprofit success, well, at the time, Is there a dinosaur? Okay, that was unexpected. Um, what version of the MPSP were we on? At the time, you know, it was back in the starter days, and now we're on success. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about that. How many records did we have? How much data cleanup was needed? We had a duplicate situation, um, not uncommon. Um, and I ended up figuring out that uh, Demand Tools was my best friend as far as deduping um, because we could get a license for free and I could go in and use their single table dedupe. Um, and I, I have a link on my resources page about that if this sounds like something you want and need. Um, it was great for that. I don't love it for the importing and exporting because I, I really like being in Salesforce, but um, I love it for the dedupe. Uh, we had something called dupe blocker that I hear is really great, but my staff had learned to ignore it. And so there were all these alerts, and they were just ignoring everything. I know, but yeah. So th they were spoiled, too. We had, we had a lot of culture shift we had to do. <laughs> um, so then, you know, the next question was, what account model are we using? Um, and then what are all these apps, and are we actually using them, or are they just taking up space and confusing people? So, um, I figured out that you can go in uh, setup and see your storage usage, 
And I could see that we had like 7,000 contacts and like 1,000 accounts. And I was like, okay, that's a clue on this whole account model situation. Because what we had was the bucket account. I loathe the individual bucket account. Um, it's, if you know, you hear about person accounts, I think it's similar. Um, or maybe the one-to-one -one is similar to person. One-to-one, -one. okay. So the, um, the individual bucket account was that everybody, all of the individuals were in one account called individual. So there were like 6,000 contacts off of this one account. You can imagine that it would make things kind of gloppy and it would make reporting really hard. Um, and everybody would be like, oh, I just can't ever get what I want out of Salesforce. And I was like, yeah, that's because of how it's set up with this bucket model. And so we moved to the household account model when we used, um, when we moved to version three of the NPSP. And this was great because now it makes sense with how Salesforce actually works. Um, if you're not in this account model yet, the household is the account. So, you know, the Mr. and Mrs. Smith household. And Mr. Smith is a contact and Mrs. Smith is a contact. And it all, it, it makes sense to my users. It makes sense on reporting. It actually kind of mirrors how the business side of Salesforce works. Um, it's so much better for reporting. I'm very, very happy about this. Um, one of the ways to tell which account model you're in is, um, is to look for that giant individual bucket. Um, if you have the one-to-one -one model, it means that there's like kind of a hidden version of, of each person. So there's an account and a contact and they both have the same name basically really only ever interact with one of them. Um, this is kind of the direction they're going. You can stay, but um, this is the best supported, and I think the reporting is the best on it. So step two is to, um, I had to clean up all those duplicates. I had to upgrade to NPS v3. That was like a solid two or three weeks of like, telling people to, to quit being in Salesforce and like I built everything out in a sandbox and um, tried, there's this whole wizard. I won't go into too much detail on this because you could do a whole session on just this. But um, spent all this time checking it out and doing the wizard in sandbox and then did it all over again in production. Um, <laughs> so I, I kind of learned what I was doing by the time I was done with it. Um, and it took a long time and there was a lot of cleanup because we had an old org that had had a lot of, um, a lot of things imported into it with varying degrees of success, um, transitioning from other systems. And so um, it was a good time to clean a lot of things up. Um, it gave us a good chance to get all of our greetings and our, our household naming down and really get good conventions. Um, but it's, it's an undertaking. Um, we implemented volunteer hour reporting in Volunteers for Salesforce. We had the app, but we weren't doing very much with it. It turns out that all my users were actually using a spreadsheet. And um, like even though they had records, only some of the people were in there and instead of adding the people, the people were just like, well, I don't know, they're not all in there, so I'm just gonna use my spreadsheet. Does this sound familiar to anybody? <laughs> um, so I took the time to translate their spreadsheet into all the records we needed, cleaned it up. Did I mention there was more than one spreadsheet? So it was like to get this person's sheet and this person's sheet, match them all up. Um, and then Volunteers for Salesforce has like built in the web form. So all you have to do is configure it and then stick it up on your website. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Which applications we use. So this, I think this is a really big part because I'm not a developer and um, I don't know how to code. Um, so these are the things that we're using a lot. Um, I use AppSona primarily for all of my importing and exporting. Uh, I'm getting to the point that I use them a lot for reporting because it's a lot easier um, than the native reporting because I don't have to go build custom report types. Um, you can get three licenses of AppSona for free. 
uh, if you're a nonprofit. We also pay happily for their email and document merge. It's not very expensive. Um, they give a great nonprofit discount, and that's how we do all of our acknowledgement letters. Um, that's how we do our fundraising letters. We sent out thank yous to all of our volunteers this year that were emailed, that were like personalized merged emails that was like, Dear Amanda, thank you for volunteering for 200 hours, teaching people how to read. We love you. Um, and that was all possible because of that Sona. Uh, we use GridBuddy. It's basically like a report that you can edit. Um, I think of this as a big option changer because our people don't really, they really miss Excel. They just really want to be able to mess with the data right while they're looking at it. And GridBuddy does a good job of displaying things. I, as an admin, can set up the grid that, that are the things that they need to be able to look at. And then my, say for example, my fundraisers, can go in and change a bunch of things, hit save, and not have to click around in all those records. It's free for nonprofits. Uh, I think they give five licenses for free. We use MailChimp for our email. They're local, we love them. Um, up to 2,000 records, they're free. We have 4,000 now, so we have to pay for MailChimp. Their connection with Salesforce is not the best. Um, we use them partially because they're local. Everything is great except their connection to Salesforce. So, um, depending on your needs, they are a really good fit. Maybe. Yeah. Do you have any ideas? You know, I think it has to be in demand. Um, Right. Because <laughs> I asked Dale Kent once to, to say that he's helping with that or whatever. I don't know what it was. And I thought that was odd. I mean, why wouldn't you want somebody to really use your product? Well, we wanted to put levels on it. And I'm like, well, this is one of the things that matches up. And it's always better to have a user that just wants to come to my site. Oh my God, that drove me so nuts. Yeah, let's let's circle up about that. Thank you, Adam. I agree. I think about Mailchimp is that they are excellent. Um, that like what you're getting is really good. It's just that um, like I want to manage everything in Salesforce, so I'm ch I'm a little spoiled that way. Um, what fix is our newest edition? This is an application that um, will allow me to set up walkthroughs for my users. If you've ever heard of Walk Me, it's like that, but it's cheaper. Um, I really like it. There's like a little Chrome, um, yeah, I'm doing on time. Ooh, almost done. There's a little Chrome thing, and I can just go in and add the steps, and my users just see like a little widget and they click on you know, whatever they need to do and it walks them through the steps to create a record, to add volunteer hours, to run reports. So I'm really hoping this is gonna help them get comfortable enough that they don't need me to handhold all the time um, because I want to empower them as much as possible and like we need to create some super users. So this is one of my plans. It's not cheap, it's cheaper than the others. It's $2,500 for nonprofits. Um, which I, I agree is a big commitment, but when you've only got one of me, um, it's a lot cheaper than trying to clone me. Stage Live uh, is our new account. It's first uh, and we are working with them on their profit success pack. Excuse me. Um, it's got so much potential for getting us real-time accounting data. We have been living in a, um, at the close of the month, our external accountant gives us information. We have been living that way for years. We need more real-time stuff. Everybody probably is familiar with Click and Pledge. That's who we use for our events and our, um, our online donations. Here's an example of the volunteer enhancements. So we're using Form Assembly 
This bottom form is the volunteer interest form. This is what my users wanted to, um, it's not a whole application, it's like just the bare minimum information so they can determine if they need to spend the time talking to somebody. And then I have a second form that will kind of fill in the rest of the application if they should spend the time filling it out. Because we need a lot of information. Yeah, I set up an email that comes out of Salesforce that includes um, a special link so that it'll just fill with the same contact. We did not pay for the pre-fill version because it's really expensive. Um, but I lust after it. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and then the volunteer hours. Up here you can see, I mean it's so simple. They, they just go in and put in their, their name, their email address, and how many hours they, um, how many hours they save. I don't know, 10 hours worth of calculations before our board meetings, because we would have to like go back and go through all the weird stuff that we were collecting. Um, and our deputy director was the one doing it, and that's such a horrible waste of our leadership's time. I was like, no, no, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. Yeah, yeah, the one above is, yeah, it's just, and you just like pick which fields um, and like publish it onto a site and then you can just stick it. It's an iframe you can just stick on your website. The next step for us, I mentioned that we're moving our accounting um, to Salesforce via Sage Live. We're also going to be, um, moving all of our program data over from a, a legacy literacy system that nobody likes. Um, and we are looking at using a community either for our students or for our board. We got really excited about communities when we went to Dreamforce this year. Um, yeah, so does anybody have any questions? We have a couple minutes. I think you get a lot. I think that their documentation is terrible. Um, right? I mean, like, you need to want it. But there's a lot there. And, and they have really good support. Like, if you have a problem, you can go to their little, like, online chat thing every day. And they will fix your problem. And their problem several times. <laughs> yeah. We don't have the support. I have an option that you can pay for premium support for that. I'll give you guys a bonus if you don't have any more questions. Um, and you, you can take a picture of this, or if you give me your card, I can email you all of this. Um, I wrote out how we dealt with anonymous donors. So we, um, we have a bunch of donors where we need to track who they were, but we needed to have it show up as anonymous on all of our gift lists. So we have a checkbox that just says anonymous, and then I made a field called recognition name. And anytime you check the checkbox, the workflow fires and, uh, and fills in anonymous instead of the recognition name. And it's a simple concept, but it took, you know, I wrote up the workflow rules and everything. So if you're interested, that's, that's here. Um, and it's worked really well for us because we don't have the panic that we're gonna accidentally publish whatever donor in the annual report. Um, and then here's a list of the resources that I talked about. Um, oh, there's this whole uh, first one is which version of MPSP am I using? Um, that came in really handy. Any questions? Awesome. Thanks, guys. <laughs>